Before you push that purchase button and confirm your stay at a Disney World hotel, watch this video. Because we got some important revelations for you that are leading to thousands of guests picking different places to stay on their Disney World vacations. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Now for some Disney World guests, a Disney hotel is an essential part of the overall vacation experience. But for others, staying directly with Disney isn't all that important. Actually, they might even find themselves better off without a reservation on Disney World property. So is that really true? Yeah, and today we're gonna tell you why that is. Now, before we get started, I feel like it's important for you to know all your Disney resort options, whether you go the Disney World hotel route or not. So if you wanna study up on every single Disney World hotel to find out if one really is a perfect fit for your family, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on your screen now, and you'll get a free Disney World hotel guide with every single Disney resort option out there for you to choose from. We put this together for you so you have a quick glance look at what all these hotels are. Now, you know we love staying in the Disney World resorts. I prefer to stay on property when I'm in Disney World because I love being able to walk to parks or grab the Skyliner, et cetera, et cetera. To me, it's just easier. But we've got a bunch of reasons in this video you might wanna take into consideration when you're doing your on-property or off-property research. First is the lost amenities. Since the historic 2020 closures, many things around the Disney scene have gone back to normal. Character dining is a thing again. You can hug the characters. We've got our nighttime spectaculars back. There's no more plexiglass in the ride vehicles. I know it is wild to think back on this now, but even with all those returning trip features, many things that disappeared post COVID closures have yet to return to the Disney World scene. And some of the biggest losses we're still missing now were once part of the whole Disney World hotel hotel package. A big example of this, package delivery. Once upon a time, you could purchase items around the Disney World parks and get them sent right back to your hotel so you didn't have to worry about carrying around that giant stitch plushie all day long. But package delivery still hasn't returned in Disney World. It's back in Disneyland, but not in Orlando, meaning you gotta really think about those big purchases you make during the day. For us, we like to hold off on those giant purchases until the end of the day so we can tote them back to the hotel right after we leave the park. Or if we're staying in a resort within walking distance to our hotel room, like how the monorail resorts are super close to Magic Kingdom and the Skyliner resorts can get you to Epcot and Hollywood Studios real fast, then we'll just travel back to our room and drop off bigger purchases before moving on with the rest of the park day. There are also lockers you can rent at each park in front of the park gates that'll cost you 12 to $14 for the entire day. If you'd rather just stow away your bigger items and purchases there, you can do that. But keep in mind that lockers are non-transferable. So if you plan on park hopping, you will have to gather your belongings and pay for a whole other locker when you get to the next park. Or you'll have to backtrack to the park you purchased the locker at to collect your belongings before the end of the day. And that can be a huge nuisance because what if you started at Animal Kingdom and now it's closed? You get it. Room service has also been MIA since the 2020 closures, except at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, where room service is still going strong. But if you want to enjoy a relaxing lunch or dinner inside your hotel room, you're going to have to get a quick service meal to go, or you're going to have to order yourself some grub from a food delivery service to get food to you from outside the Disney bubble. Just keep in mind that the fast food you get delivered will still need to be picked up at Bell Services at your resort, since it will not be dropped off directly at your hotel door. So yes, you will have to put on clothing. Now, before the closures, those staying at a Disney World resort also had the added benefit of extra magic hours. And although this perk didn't exactly go away, it looks a lot different now than what it used to. Once upon a time, any guest staying at a Disney-owned resort, whether value, moderate, or deluxe, could head into select parks on certain mornings one hour earlier, or stay in select parks on certain nights one hour after the park closed. And most days of the week had some sort of extra magic hour in the morning or evening. It was a lot more common than it is now to have have evening extra magic hours. But this perk split up into two different Disney Resort benefits after the closures. Now you've got early theme park entry and extended evening hours. What's the difference? Well, first early theme park entry continues to be available for everyone staying at a Disney Resort hotel, but it's now limited to only 30 minutes before the parks open instead of a full hour. This is available for every park on every day, which is a nice switch up though. 
And extended evening hours continue to be available on certain nights at certain parks. It's a lot more rare than it used to be, but you'll also only get this benefit if you're staying at a deluxe resort. So if you're planning on staying at a value or moderate hotel, you'll only have early theme park entry at your disposal. For deluxe resort guests, this perk really does help you experience the parks with little to no crowds, while also letting you hang out two hours after the parks close down for the day. Nice added bonus there. But usually extended evening hours only happens once per week for certain parks, so it's also pretty rare. So definitely check and see when extended evening hours is happening before you decide to shell out the big bucks for that deluxe resort. And then there's the missing Disney's Magical Express, which used to take guests traveling in from the Orlando International Airport straight away to your Disney World Resort, and then back again at the end of your trip, and it was all for free. Though the Magical Express's retirement wasn't COVID-related, it did lead to two new premium shuttle options, Mirrors Connect and the Sunshine Flyer, which do essentially the same thing that Disney's Magical Express did, only at a price. However, Mirrors Connect and the Sunshine Flyer just recently announced that they're going to be merging their services into one combined service starting on August 1st. The new service has been renamed Mirrors Connect Driven by Sunshine, and yes, this Mod Podge Express will still cost money to use. Previously, we've seen Mirrors Connect Sunshine Flyer cost about $40 per standard adult round trip, and although it wouldn't shock us to see prices for this shuttle service bump up by a few dollars, since it'll be offering new features like 24-7 service and even private trip selections too, plus if they're not competing against each other anymore, then what else are you going to do, right? So of course they can charge you more. It seems like the summer sales that have been going on for both Mirrors and Sunshine Flower will still be taking place for the time being after the merger, meaning you could potentially get a round trip for around $30 instead if you're planning on traveling super soon. Or if you don't want to take a shuttle at all, you can always download a rideshare app like Uber or Lyft to come pick you up from the airport instead. Just keep in mind that during peak driving times, like during lunch and rush hour, the prices for your ride could triple in cost. But having both apps downloaded gives you the opportunity to do some price comparisons and figure out which ride will give you the cheapest one way trip at that given time. If you'd rather have a little more control over how you get to the parks, you can always pick up a car from one of the several car rental services at Orlando Airport. This will definitely be your priciest option, but it will allow you to travel to and from the parks whenever you want to instead of having to rely on Disney's free buses or Ubers, Lyfts, etc. Just make sure you reserve a rental car ahead of your trip instead of waiting until the day of. Rental cars do book up quickly, especially during prime travel seasons, and you might be forced to rent a vehicle that's even more expensive, or you might not have any options at all if you wait to book your car till too late. And just to really hit you in the feels here, Disney Resorts also got rid of their free magic bands back in August of 2021. Once upon a time, if you booked a Disney World Resort stay, you could pick out a free standard magic band for the whole family to have sent to your house before your trip, and nothing was as magical as opening a magic band box and knowing your trip was right around the corner. But since Disney World added the magic mobile option to the My Disney Experience app back in March 2021, which is basically a digital park ticket on your phone that makes scanning into the park easy, Disney went ahead and dissolved the free magic band since Magic Mobile basically did the same thing. That being said, you can still pick up a Magic Band or a Magic Band Plus, which has extra tech features on it that you can use around the parks from several Disney World gift shops. You're just gonna have to pay the $30 plus extra for it. Okay, the next reason why people are not staying at Disney hotels, prices, right? Even Disney's value resorts have been drying up travel funds lately. And a lot of that has to do with just how much Disney resort prices have increased over the past five years. Let's take a look at a couple of different Disney hotel options and compare their prices between 2018 and now. Now to keep things fair, we'll compare them around the same time frame: a five day trip at the start of June for a family of two kids, two adults, no discounts included. I'll start with the cheapest hotel option first, a standard room over at Disney's All-Star Sports. In 2018, a standard room here would cost you around $160 to $190 per night. Meanwhile, in 2023, a standard room is going to cost you $195 to $230 per night. Keep in mind that this is indeed Disney's cheapest hotel option. And while you can stay at All-Star Sports for as little as $130 during non-peak season times, that cheaper rack rate window is very slim. So these $200 prices are the kind of prices you're going to come across more often when booking your trip. 
Okay, let's look at what we often call the cheapest deluxe resort option close to Magic Kingdom, a standard room over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. In 2018, a stay here would cost you around $400 to $420 per night, and in 2023, it's going to cost $540 to $550 per night. So what gives? Why are rooms in Disney World costing almost $100 more than they used to? Well, the easy answer to this can be summed up in one word, inflation. As prices go up everywhere, prices have to go up in Disney too. But Disney's price increases have always been a little more complicated than that. Since the early 1980s, Disney's price increases have always outpaced inflation, and the gap has been widening even more since the 2020 closures. You see, the things Disney has to buy to make the parks run are getting more expensive too. And since Disney is a park that's always growing and changing, adding new attractions, new hotels, potentially even new lands into the parks, that's also going to cost them more, just like how it's going to cost you more to experience them. So here's where things get interesting. For a while there, Disney could really rack up those resort prices post-closure because demand was so high. People were desperate to get back to the Disney scene and just experience some semblance of normality. And this was Disney's chance to make up some of that lost revenue from their four months of closures and very limited park capacity. But that demand has been starting to slow down, which we've seen firsthand in the parks this summer. I'm not saying Disney's done any backtracking with their prices now that revenge travel is finally starting to simmer down, but Disney has been offering more and more discounts recently for future guests. We've seen room discounts pop up for summer savings, holiday promotions, and even 2024 trips. And that could be because Disney World hotel guests are starting to choose other stays over the Disney ones because they can stretch their $200 a lot more somewhere else. If you really do want to stay in a Disney World resort for your next trip, always check out the special offers, deals, and discounts page on the Disney World website to see what kind of discounts you can apply to your upcoming stay. We also have all of those discounts on our newsletter. If you want to join our newsletter, it is free. The link to sign up is right in the description, and we let you know when any new hotel discounts come out. You can also rely on your friendly neighbor Disney travel agent, like our friends at Small World Vacations. They keep an eye on these kinds of pop-up discounts without you having to overly obsess about keeping up to date on the savings opportunities while also trying to work a nine to five and keep the kids healthy and fed. It's a lot to juggle. So your Small World Vacations agent is going to check those discounts and change your trip to a cheaper trip for you. That's incredibly useful and they'll do it for free. So I'm going to link their info down in the description below, just in case you want to hit them up. Next, some Disney goers are choosing to stay off property because there may be some bonus benefits elsewhere. So about that dollar stretching business I mentioned before, where are Disney World guests staying on their Disney World vacations if they're not in a Disney owned hotel? Well, you don't want to have to play a game of where's Waldo. These guests are all booking rooms at the Good Neighbor Hotels instead. Good Neighbor Hotels are not Disney owned, but they do partner with Disney, so they still provide a lot of the same benefits you'd find in a Disney World resort. So why stay at one of these hotels when you could just stay at an authentic Disney World resort instead? Well, first, a handful of Good Neighbor hotels offer similar Disney World benefits like complimentary transportation and early theme park entry for a much cheaper price. Some Good Neighbor hotels have extra benefits that the Disney-owned hotels don't have, like free breakfast and drink vouchers. And most importantly, many Good Neighbor hotels will give you way bigger rooms with more amenities for the cost of what you'd pay for a standard room at one of Disney's resorts, or potentially even less than that. Our personal favorite Good Neighbor hotels? which I'm sure you know if you've watched our channel, are the Swan and Dolphin and the Swan Reserve. Now, this is weird to say that these are good neighbors and not straight up Disney owned because they're literally steps away from Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Even though the land that Swan and Dolphin reside on is owned by Disney World, the hotels themselves are part of the Starwood Hotel Group, Marriott. The reason we love these hotels so much is because of their ability to give us a deluxe resort experience at a much more moderate price point. The Swan and Dolphin not only still have the early theme park entry perk, but they also get the extended evening hours benefit at their disposal too. These hotels and the Shades of Green Hotel, which is the military hotel, are the only non-Disney owned resorts that have this deluxe resort benefit. To get over to the parks from these hotels, you can either take a bus to Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom, or you can hop on a friendship boat to visit Epcot or just walk there, or you go to Disney's Hollywood Studios on a friendship boat or just walk there as well. And let's not forget the Swan and Dolphin have the most hotel dining options between the two of them. This includes Blue Zoo, an award-winning seafood restaurant helmed by celebrity chef Todd English, the Fountain with affordable diner-like options like cheeseburgers and shakes. This is probably 
probably the least expensive table service option in Disney World. Fuel is a grab-and-go station that has self-serve Froyo with self-serve Dole Whip as one of the options, the only place you can get self-serve Dole Whip in Disney World. Rosa Mexicano is a brand new elevated fiesta dining experience. Il Molino New York Trattoria, inspired by the original New York City location, which has been voted number one Italian restaurant for two decades by Zagat. Okay, I'll stop there, but literally that's only half of the options you got to choose from. My big word of warning about Good Neighbor Hotels is that you need to do your research before you book one though. The Good Neighbor Hotel website has over 40 different options for you to choose from and they are all very, very different. Some may not have early theme park entry. Some may have park transportation you have to pay for. Some may be farther away from the parks than you'd like them to be. Sometimes that park transportation doesn't go as often as you want it to. There are a lot of pitfalls, but there are a lot of potential benefits as well. So whatever the case may be, check the Good Neighbor Hotel website and read up on what these different hotel options can offer you before you dive all in and pick one just because of that cheaper price tag. The next reason why some people aren't staying at Disney World hotels is because they're cheating on Disney World. I'm going to let you in on something that Disney World would rather me not tell you about. There are other theme parks in Orlando besides Disney World. One of Disney's biggest theme park competitors in the Orlando area, of course, is Universal Studios, which is home to two theme parks, one epic water park, and a city walk area, which is basically a smaller version of Disney Springs. It's also got a variety of resorts with a variety of different price points. So let's take a look at the different benefits that come from staying at a Universal hotel rather than a Disney one. First and foremost, if you're planning on spending more days in Universal than at Disney, then staying at one of their resorts will provide you with early park admission and free resort transportation to and from their parks. On top of that, the Universal hotels will also have pool hopping privileges. So when you book a stay at one of the Disney World resorts, you're only allowed to use the pools at your hotel, unless you're jumping between sister resorts like Port Orleans French Quarter and Riverside. But when you book a room at a Universal hotel, and I mean any Universal hotel, then you can literally pool hop around the resorts and try out whatever pools you want to instead of being limited to just your hotel's pool. So if you want to set aside a full day to swim during your vacation, Universal might win you over. Disney's deluxe resort guests might have an extended evening hours benefit, but for guests staying at one of Universal's premier, aka deluxe, hotels, you'll receive complimentary Universal Express Unlimited passes, which you can use to skip the lines for most of Universal's popular attractions all day long. And get this, Universal's premier slash deluxe hotels are around the same price as one of Disney World's moderate hotels. So, you know, just keep that in your back pocket. And just to sweeten the deal, Universal Studios hotels still have free package delivery, so you can purchase a souvenir from the park and have it sent back to your hotel without you needing to backtrack all the way over to do it yourself. Lots of pros to consider, my friends. Of course, if you are planning on spending more time at Disney World and less at Universal, then some of these Universal hotel benefits aren't going to help you out a whole lot. After all, staying with Disney will still give you lots of Disney World benefits too, like early park admission, free hotel theme park parking, free resort transportation, and a returning dining plan option starting back up for those booking a vacation in 2024. So talk things over with your group, do your research, decide which type of resort will give you the most benefits for your specific trip and then go from there. By the way, if you want to see some resort tours of Universal Hotels, head over to allears.net. It's All Ears TV here on YouTube. They've got a bunch of good ones. Another reason why folks maybe aren't staying at Disney World hotels on their Disney World trip is that they're staying with a big group. Traveling to Disney with a family reunion or a packed out bachelorette party, or maybe you've just got a big family and you need more rooms so you're not all on top of each other during the entire vacation. Unfortunately, if you have more than five or six people in your family, it might be difficult to find budget-friendly accommodations while also staying as a Disney Resort guest. With a bigger group, you'll have to get multiple hotel rooms or pay for a significantly more expensive villa or suite at one of the resorts, and those options will cost you a very pretty penny. So where do you turn if you don't want to drain your vacation funds on a hotel room alone? Well, some folks go to a vacation home. Third-party rental services like Airbnb and VRBO often have full houses that you can rent for way less than you'd spend on a Disney World villa. These houses potentially come with full kitchens, private pools, multiple bedrooms, maybe even some fun Disney-inspired theming depending on where you stay. While Airbnbs can be extremely useful for large travel groups, keep in mind that booking a vacation house off Disney property means you'll be sacrificing those Disney Resort benefits, and that means no compliments complimentary transportation, early theme park entry, Disney dining within walking distance, etc. 
Again, read the reviews first, because these Airbnbs and VRBOs are being rented out by independent parties and not Disney. And you're gonna need to know what to expect, not only when it comes to quality, but also when it comes to extra renter regulations like cancellation policies, cleaning fees, and additional housekeeping rules. There are a lot of rental properties around Disney World, but they're not all awesome, so do your research. Another reason why folks aren't staying at Disney World hotels is because they can still experience the hotels anyway. Yep, that's right. You can still go to the Disney World hotels without spending hundreds to stay at them. I get this question a lot, actually. People asking if they can still go check out the Grand Floridian Gingerbread House or if they can eat at a hotel that they're not staying at. Absolutely you can, and Disney wants you to. Quick example for you, let's say you're staying at one of the value resorts to save a couple hundred bucks, but you still really wanna see what those monorail resorts look like. By all means, you can have your cake and eat it too. I've had some really great days taking the monorail around to Disney's Grand Floridian, Contemporary, Polynesian Village, to explore their shops, take part in some of their crafts and activities, make reservations for their restaurants, get a drink from their lounges, and even grab a spot on the Polynesian beach to watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks. And doing that is totally free. I mean, you gotta pay for your drink and your food and if you shop or whatever, but going to the hotels doesn't cost anything. And don't forget to treat yourself to an order of the Ohana noodles from the Polynesian Ohana restaurant or as a secret menu option from Tambu Lounge. And if you really wanna show your devotion to all things Ohana noodles, you can even grab one of our Ohana Means Noodles shirts from the dfbstore.com website. And when people come up to you and say, hey, nice shirt, then you know who the true Disney World devotees out there are. Bam, instant friendship unlocked. Okay, got sidetracked with noodles, happens all the time. So aside from the gyms, pools, and getting a hold of those theme park perks, you're more than welcome to explore the resorts to your heart's content. However, keep in mind that you cannot park at a resort you're not paying for a room at or have a reservation at. You must take Disney World transportation to hop around to the different hotels, which, unless you're on the Skyliner route or monorail loop, usually means taking one of the theme park or Disney Springs buses to get to a new location. And this next one is a biggie. This is a big reason why people are choosing not to stay at Disney World hotels right now. Lots of changes have been going on at some of Disney World's most popular resorts recently. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is currently updating their rooms to take on a classy Mary Poppins theme and eventually renovations will start taking place around the lobby as well. Disney's Fort Wilderness closed its trails and restaurant to give it a major refurbishment, make it strictly a quick service option with the marketplace set up. And although we expect these updates to be finished sometime this summer, the resort will continue to have work done on it as a Disney Vacation Club starts to take over the area. More than 350 refreshed cabins will replace the existing cabins at the resort, and according to Disney, they'll now be inspired by the resort's idyllic setting while also paying homage to its unique culture and heritage. Meanwhile, Disney's Boardwalk Inn is getting ready to open their refreshed guest rooms to the public, while they also continue to work on their new table service restaurant, The Cake Bake Shop, set to open later this year. And Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is in the process of building a brand new DVC tower, which means more villas, more dining, and more recreational activities will be offered at this deluxe hotel, but not until later in 2024. So while it's understandable that Disney would want to update their resorts just like they do their parks, these massive updates lead to a whole lot of construction, and that can really pull you out of the Disney immersion. Not only does construction work mean cranes and mounds of dirt and big bulky walls so that really don't mesh with that resort theming you're paying for, but it also means you're probably going to hear a lot of construction work going on in the background too, like drilling and hammering, beeping vehicles, and other various noises that aren't supposed to be part of the usual Disney soundtrack we hear playing in the lobby. While Disney doesn't schedule construction to happen overnight or early in the morning because they don't want to interrupt your much needed beauty sleep, construction work like this normally takes place in the middle of the day. So if you've got a child with a set nap schedule or you're gonna wanna head back to the resort midday to take a nap, just keep in mind that staying at one of these four resorts right now might not provide you with the best cat nap ever. You can always check a resort's construction updates on each hotel's main page via the Disney World website. All construction notices will be listed toward the top of the page in bright orange letters to let you know what you need to be aware of before you book a room there. So while staying at a Disney World resort may be a key element to lots of guests' overall Disney experience, it doesn't have to be for everyone. There are other options available out there that could very well help you pull off that dream Orlando vacation you're after. So make sure to do your research, compare those prices, check out those hotel perks, and keep coming back to the DFB channel for even more Disney resort tips and tricks. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.